Welcome to another video on Keyclock Identity and Access Management System. In this video, I am talking about how to integrate a Keyclock server with Spring Security Framework. There are two methods to integrate Keyclock with Spring Security Framework. First method is by using the Keyclock Spring Security Adapter. This is a third party library provided by Keyclock. Second method is by using PO Spring Security Libraries. No third party libraries are involved in this method. I have already published a video about the first method. If you are interested, please check the description area for the video link. Today I am showing you the second method how to integrate Spring Security without using any third party library. First I will be showing you the Keyclock admin console configurations. After that I will show you the application code level configurations. Let's get started. Now I am in the Keyclock admin console. I am going to create a new client for this integration. I visit the clients page. Provide the client ID as Spring Security Client. Client protocol is open at connect and save the client. Now I am in the client configuration page. Here I am setting the access type as private. Also I am providing a valid redirect URL. It starts with HTTP localhost port 9090. Our Spring Boot client application is running on this port. Those two are the only changes I am making and I save the client. You can get the client secret from the credentials tab over here. For this integration, we need OpenID Connect related endpoints from the Keyclock server. To get those endpoints, I am visiting to the Realm settings. By clicking OpenID Endpoint Configuration, I can get those endpoints. I have to use these endpoints at the Spring Boot project configuration. Now I am on to the Spring Boot application configurations. This code is already available in GitHub. Please check the description area for the link. Now I am in the build.gradle file of my Spring Boot application. You can see here, I am only using the dependencies provided by Spring for this project. Those are Spring Boot Starter Web, Starter Security and Starter OAuth 2 Client. This is my application properties file. Here I have only mentioned the port number which is 9090. Here you can see a very simple controller I have created to demonstrate my setup. In this class, public endpoint can be invoked by anyone without being authenticated, but the private endpoint can be invoked by the authenticated users only. I will come back to this file at the demonstration. Now I am visiting the most important file of this project, which is the security configuration file. Here you can see in the configure method, I have exposed the public endpoint to everyone but the private endpoint only for the people who have authenticated. Here I configure authentication support with an OpenID Connect provider by calling OAuth2 login method. In this section, I register my Keyclock OpenID Connect client using client registration repository bean. Here I set the registration ID as Keyclock. This ID is used for client identification by Spring Security. Client ID is the ID of the client I created in Keyclock admin console. You can get the client secret from the credentials tab of the client configuration page. I showed you the credentials tab when I was in the client configuration page. Here I set the client scope as OpenID Connect. I have made a separate video about Keyclock client scopes. You can watch that if you are interested. Link is in the description area. Also, I set the client authentication method as basic and grant type as authorization code. Redirect URI is an endpoint 
exposed by Spring Security to cater redirections from the authorization server, which is Keyclock server. It uses client registration ID to build the URI. Authorization URI, token URI, user info URI and JSON web key set URI are copied from OpenID configurations page of the Keyclock server I showed you a short while ago. I used the ID tokens subject as the username attribute. You can use any attribute you prefer, but it should be unique and mandatory attribute in JSON token. And I set the client name as Keyclock. Finally, I call build method to create the client registration. Alright, it is the time to demonstrate the setup. I start the server in debug mode. My Keyclock server is already running on port 8080. First, I visit the public URL. You can see here, I can access it without being authenticated. Now, I am visiting to the private URL. Now it redirected me to the Keylock login page. Here I provide the credentials of a valid user of this realm. Once authenticated, I was successfully redirected to the private endpoint. Also, I would like to inspect the user information that was passed to the Spring Boot application. So, I am missed into my simple controller and keep a breakpoint on the return statement. Let's try refreshing the browser again. You can see execution was paused at the breakpoint I set. Now I am going to inspect the principal object referenced by OIDC user variable. Here you can see it stores all the information about the ID token in the principle. With that, we came to the end of this video. Now, I hope you guys are aware about integrating Spring Security with Keyclock. If you have any question, please put them as comments or send an email to the email address mentioned in the description. See you in the next video. Thank you very much.